Well, welcome everybody to our Term 4 presentation. For my design project, I made a, a dog feeder app. So, this is my problem statement for my design project. It was to design a friendly user app to improve my previous design project by using Python program to control feeding times and prevent pet obesity. So this is the general scope of our course. So we learned programming in idle, which is like a terminal or um, like any, any place to code. Uh, learned pandas, uh, the basics like syntaxes and functions. This is the, pretty much the most important part of coding because if, uh, if you're coding as an error or like a wrong indentation, then your coding will, your program will not work correctly. And then uh, how to manipulate arrays. Uh, calling the web, so you can program, um, you can you can make a program where you can use information from other websites to make your own type of program. So to get data from that website into your program, and then uh, Matplot and Tekinte. Matplot is like uh, I find it interesting for me because it it shows, or you can actually make your own graphs to the all three D, and you can manipulate them the way they look. So. Uh, in essence, you can show it in, like, in, in any way you want. And then also the Kinta, this is like a, like a, in every computer you have like a small pop-up window with a text and stuff to like say okay or like a confirmation. Or you can edit it the way you want. It's all, you can also use it like for an app interface, but it's not as strong as, as the, as the one that I'm using. So this is the, so this is the, um, stuff I used outside the course so for my design project, which is the key uh, library. So this add-on is designed from the ground up to for apps, for, for designing apps. And it's also cross-platform, which means um, a person with Android can use it and a person with iPhone can use it. And then MQTT, uh, this is a message. Uh, this is pretty much used as, to, uh, as a communication device for low bandwidth um, in low bandwidth areas. So th uh, this is this also plays a very important part of my design project and then the Raspberry Pi. It's like a mini computer, like any mini computer but a lot slower, but it's stronger than Arduino Uno. Okay, so how does my app work? So my app has two options, but let's just first say so I have two tabs so far for my for my app. We have the four speed option and then we have the daily speed option. So let's start with the four speed. So it is a it's, it's just a simple button. When you click on it, it instantly sends a message and uh, the motor in the in the feeder turns on and then food comes out. So this is the coding behind it. So to make my button look the way it does, uh, the button has uh, is this coding right like here, as well as this. So whenever I, so whenever I press the button, a pop-up message will appear for confirmation saying, okay, it is the end. So then you just press okay to dismiss it. Uh, and uh, these, uh, the on press read stuff, this is pretty much uh, methods that are called to uh, whenever the button is pressed, it does, it does what, what, what it's told to do, which means it opens this pop-up, this one right here. So how does my daily feed work? Okay, so first I uh, have to find a way to make it uh, look, look unique or not generic, and that was to add like a, or use a method to make like a custom widget, which is like a timer. So in your alarm clocks, uh, alarm clock apps, uh, it's like, like pressing a button and just adding a normal clock saying this is when you want to wake up or do something. So it's very similar to that. So what, what will happen is, uh, when you press the plus button, which is uh, the code runs here, so, so this is the code that, that changes the way it looks. And what, what will happen is that this will appear, the time picker. So then you can choose your hours and then your minutes, and you can choose between uh, AM or PM, and then you just press OK, and then once that happens, um, it will it will show it on the label, but this but this right here this is what makes the time picker uh, uh, pop up like to show what it is. And then once you click your time, your your, your time is going to appear in this label section right here, 
And this this whole custom widget is this whole curly wheel. So this one is the label, this this one is the button, which if you press the update button again, it will show the time figure again if you change the time. And then remove just removes the whole the whole widget. So uh, this is my update times coding. So what it does is uh, if for example in a specific slot if you want to update something then it, uh, you just click on or go onto that slot in the app and then just say update it will it seamlessly, it, there, there is no errors um, and then for the remove one, it, it also works the same way so if you remove one at a specific location in, in the app it will also remove it in, in the slot, where the, the time slots so, 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 these, so these are my time slots, so this is how it works so when you press um, OK, so, okay, so firstly if there's no times Every time it in the slot will be false. So that means the time slot is open in the array. So then when a time is chosen, then it will take place at the first open slot in the, in the array. And then when you go to update, it will be and if it was the first slot, it changes that, that number into I mean, this time to this time. So it works. So how does it work? So when the when each time you update the label or you uh, or you choose a timer, that a message is sent to the MQTT broker. So this is where this is the most important part. Because right here, this is where it keeps the information that you sent, the, the time. And what it what it allows you to do is actually send those timers to um, to a, 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 another device so that you can use that information to do what it's for, so I'll explain that as well. But we also have the force feed option. So the force feed option, I mean our topic. So how topics work um, is pretty much uh, in coding, uh, uh, in, the, in the coding something, some type of code must be subscribed to a topic to see what's inside that information. Just want to say that's not that makes sense. So then in the force feed option, our topic, we have, uh, where it's equal to on, it means that the the uh, motor is rotating, which means it's feeding. And when I, and when I uh, go to the topic and I say, okay, uh, publish the words off, then the motor will turn off immediately. And then for the array, um, what I do is, all I do is, is just send uh, the times to the, to the Raspberry Pi and then um, it checks each time when, if that time is uh, the current time, then it, it does what it's called. But then you can also manipulate any any information in here. So this is the Raspberry Pi script. So what, what happens is um, we first on on connect of the Raspberry Pi scaling, uh, we have to subscribe to the MQTT. So to make sure that it gets that information and to make sure that um, to make sure that uh, it, it doesn't get false information and you have to specify which topic you want to get information from. Okay, and then um, what will happen is if this all, all the all this says that if that topic is on, uh, um, just uh, just just do these things on the output pin. So on the Raspberry Pi, it has like these pins that you use for um, connecting other components, like a like a sensor or a was uh, or like a mini camera. But uh, pretty much what what happens here is that if the motor is on, do you think if if it's not doing anything, off. So this is the Kiwi code. So this is um, so this right here is used for the app. So how, how it looks. So in this section right here, um, which we just call the uh, MD uh, bottom navigation uh, item. So what it means is each tab, like each tab is is one single screen. So in in that in that uh, navigation item, everything must be indented that you want in that screen to appear at work. So the scroll view, the scroll, scroll view just helps the user like um, scroll the time to see how far up and down they can uh, see which one on uh, update or just navigate easily. Um, yeah, but, but but these right here, this is just where the, the timer widget, where the label and the update and the remove button is located. And oh yeah, okay. So how it also works is that whenever you press on the tab, like immediately, it will update to the current time that, that you've chosen each time. Um, and this is, so this is pretty much what, what, what it does, this, this root.update custom widget. It runs this whole code each time you press the button to make sure that the information you're getting is always up to date. So this is the product structure model. So we have our MQTT server that 
and, and everything works with the internet. It, um, without internet, uh, you can't actually pu publish a time yet. So you have to make sure that everything is connected and nothing is disconnected. So we have our um, dog feeder app on, on the cell phone and Kiwi. So you can use it on any device that has uh, internet. And as well as the Raspberry Pi must also be connected. So then, what's inside my dog feeder? Okay, so we have a hole sensor. So this is like a sensor that detects a, a magnet. So whenever the magnet is in its uh, place, it will show a red light to say that the, the magnet is detected or what it's on. Uh, this will be used for whenever there's a full rotation in the, in the feeder that um, it stops immediately. So each time it detects, it stops immediately um, whenever the curve is running. So then we have our motor driver. So, so this device right here, it is used to control the speed and the direction of the motor. Yeah? And then uh, the Raspberry Pi, which is the, the mini computer, this is, uh, where, um, this is where all the, the, the other code is running and it, um, <coughs> it's, also the, it's also the main important part. Without it, uh, you can't do it a bit of a lively as an R unit. And then the motor, this is the, the one that drives the gear. So this is my bullet materials. So the only expensive thing would be the Raspberry Pi. They can range from like 600 Rand up until 1500. So you have to make sure that you use the most uh, cost efficient one so, so that it's money isn't wasted. And then the second most expensive would be the feeder housing. So this will also depend which out of which material the feeder will be made of. I want to in the future have different types of sizes for the feeders for um, amount of uh, pets. But yeah, so the, the equivalent total would be 1,391 Rand and 6 cents. So testing. Yes, I have done multiple testings and it does work. Uh, there, there have been errors before in the past, but uh, it, I fixed it uh, as, I, as I was testing. And whenever I press the OK button, pop-up message appears, and whenever I add a when I add a part timer widget, it does send it immediately, so there's no errors. Uh, technical difficulties. <coughs> so me, uh, I'm not really good with computers, so I had to learn about uh, Raspberry Pi and how to use the terminal. Uh, for me, using the terminal is quite difficult because I'm always used to seeing like a desktop with all the icons, and the terminal just makes it like just like a code line, and you have to type it. So yeah, so then uh, connecting the Raspberry Pi to my laptop with Wi-Fi, um, there were a few workarounds for this one, uh, but there was always an issue. But luckily it did work. Um, I'll show just now. And then the timer widget placement. So this one day, I spent the whole day just trying to figure out why my timer widget was always on the bottom left of my screen. And then it turns out I should just rename it to, not as a label, but as like a box layout. So then it will take the place. So then my technical success, uh, the motor activates when the button is pressed, the timer um, when it's selected, the label changes, and then the update widget always displays at new times, as well as I created my own MQTT server and uh, my own server and MQTT. Feature improvements. So I also want to add a, a camera in the future for the user to see the, the surroundings of the area to have like a, a communication if you're not near the feeder. I also want to add more screen, more tabs show more information such as graphs or statistics or any type of information to the user to see how, the, um, how, ma how many times the user uses the force feed uh, option to, to, to tell the user, okay, maybe when you use force feed each time this time around, well, why don't you just put in a timer instead? So, so that, that is also the important thing. And then I want to also add um, LEDs to my, or any type of information actually on my dog video to show that if there is an error or if, if it is moving or it's supposed to move and the gear is not moving or is moving. Um, and then I also want to uh, use an external M MQTT broker. So currently I'm using a, a, a local one thing. <laughs> so then, this is my activity log chart. So, for me, uh, I have to spend uh, a, a lot of time in the theory, which is the coding work. Um, there's a lot to learn when you do coding. And then, for my, for my tutorial project, I spent 29 hours on it. 
The reason for this is I had to write exams this year as well. Um, so I wasn't here for one week. And then for my design project, which is my dog feeder, I spent them uh, 75 hours onto it. And then my PPD, which is our personal and professional development, which is like um, our meetings and see where things are and uh, what we have to do next. Or yeah, so and also character development. And then extra. So extra and practical uh, can be coming and coming in early or working of, um, at, at my house, as well as um, when we were downstairs this term. We also have to have automation works with, the, with our Eric to revamp it for next year. So we have to spend uh, like almost a week uh, in total just to clear the area and make sure that um, it is uh, up to standards. So then lessons learned. I've learned that, that Parmesh, uh, to implement them, is quite difficult. And like to, to just saying, uh, just add a timer, uh, like just like saying an idea so, so it sounds easy, but if you actually try to execute it, it is not as easy as it looks. And then, uh, I, and and in, when you're trying to be fancy, um, that can also make the pro the process of coding a lot slower. When you could, when in reality, you should just make it first work and then implement fancy stuff. And as well as time, uh, because I had one week off, um, I was a bit stressed that my dog feeder wouldn't get completed because the uh, the, the, timer, the timer stuff was quite exhausting to, to work on. And then the web distribution. Okay, so for so I did pretty much the, the, the basic stuff for my app, such as the, the, the GUI, which is like the app interface, how to scroll and you know, navigate. I also did um, the time picker stuff, like how, um, where the clock pops up. I also uh, did the Raspberry Pi's code. Uh, so, and then, but Nick, each, each time I got stuck, Nick came in and he helped me uh, try and understand what I'm trying, well, what I'm trying to achieve and, like, and how to do it. So each time I got stuck, he, he would go and show me why well, don't we do this and then he, um, and he would work. And then he would also show me how to make like an MQTT or like a server, your own server, which was, which was quite cool. And as well as um, explain to me arrays and time slots, how that also works. And then professional ethics. Uh, so my dog feeder, uh, the main idea for it is to prevent dog obesity and limiting food consumption. At my house, I have like eight to nine dogs, and I can't keep track, can't, can't keep track of them, and they they just want to constantly eat. So this is why Johan, my my father, he gave me the idea at the beginning of the year to design a dog feeder. And um, the dog feeder also requires less effort for the the person who, uh, who owns it to, to give food um, or like to um, maintain it. And as well as the app is very easy to use. User friendly. So these are my uh, references for the um, libraries and information I used to design my app. So this one's for the Kiwi. Um, you will you will always try you, you will always find the information you want on your app or on your um, like if you're stuck you will always find them in here. And then acknowledgements. I would like to thank Nick. Uh, without him, this project wouldn't have been completed or it wouldn't have been 100% finished to, to up to up to this point. Uh, and I also want to thank Benny for um, for making this term fun and not always being there. <laughs> So now I will show you the, the demonstration, but first let me just uh, go to the next slide and ask if there are any questions.